Demand-driven distribution saved millions by cutting water loss. In 2006, the World Bank estimated that 45 million cubic meters of pure drinking water are lost every day in distribution networks. That's enough water to serve nearly 200 million people. Much of this water can be saved by a new way of thinking and a new way of using technology. We call it demand-driven distribution. But let's start at the beginning. Water, as you know, is essential for our survival and for our everyday comfort. In built-up areas, pipes below our cities make sure we get water at the turn of a tap. The waterworks take care of that. As you also know, many waterworks use pumps to create the pressure required to get the water to every home. It's all very clever, really, but lots of water is wasted underground. That's bad news for the environment and for our economy. How does this happen? Well, people will be people. We don't use the same amount of water all the time. In the morning, lots of people take showers, go to the toilet, brush their teeth, and so on. Every time a tap is opened, the pressure in the entire system drops a little. So, we need to keep the pressure very high. Otherwise, this happens. To keep everyone happy, the pumps at the waterworks maintain a constant high pressure. But this is not just good news. At midday and during the night, very little water is used. So the water is under much higher pressure than required. This is a problem. But why? When pipes are under pressure, they wear down faster. Eventually, cracks are formed. Water will leak through those cracks at all times, but the higher the pressure, the faster it flows. Pure drinking water just disappears, and that water is worth money. What a waste. That's not all. The water can cause the soil to sink, causing lots of damage to roads and buildings. Also, when a pipe is badly cracked, it must be replaced. You'll need to dig up the road and divert traffic. Yep, that's expensive too. But let's take an even closer look at the pipes. This particular pipe has not been replaced lately, while the sections before have been recently replaced. The older pipe now has to deal with even greater pressure because of reduced friction loss in the new pipes. This can be solved with pressure regulation. If you don't, the cracks grow faster. The pipes need replacement sooner. And I don't even want to bring up the money again. But I'll have to. Money is not just wasted on water and repairs. It's also wasted on energy consumption. Because back at the waterworks, pumps are working hard to keep the pressure high. They're always set for peak hours, so they use too much electricity day and night. Here you can see the big picture. Water is wasted. Power is wasted. This is bad for the environment, bad for the roads, and bad for the economy. Grundfos has an answer. Demand-driven distribution. It's about using technology in new ways and about designing distribution systems so that pressure is kept just right at all consumers when it needs to be not all the time. In conventional pressurized systems, you get very high pressure on the water when it leaves the waterworks. Valves along the way reduce pressure to prevent damage. This basically means that you begin by using a lot of energy to put pressure on the water and then take it out again. That's clearly a waste of energy, but of course it's done so that people out at the far end of the pipes get pressure during peak hours too. This is wasteful. Demand-driven distribution is a different way of doing things. It's about maintaining the pressure that's really necessary and avoiding overshooting. It's about pressure management. With a demand-driven distribution system, we can measure the pressure across the pump, so we know exactly what the consumers need and can adjust the flow. It also means that we can compensate for losses in the pipes. The lower the pressure in the pipes, the less water you lose. And we can help you send out less water while still keeping everyone happy. Rather than maintaining constant pressure at the pump,
we keep it constant at the critical consumer. How is this done? Well, we will typically install demand-driven pump units in different places in your water distribution system. These pumps register how much pressure is required at any time and help make sure the pump delivers exactly that, no more. Different models are available for small communities, large towns, major cities. The pumps meet the real demand, no more. They work hard in the morning and during other peak hours, and when consumption drops, they work less hard, but still maintain the correct pressure at the consumers. Before we explore the savings this creates, here's a few science bits. Many calculations, some of them quite complex, help us determine how much water and energy you can save. In all cases, Grundfuss takes a conservative estimate, which means that your savings might well be even greater than we say. Let's take a look at the savings. You will always have some losses in any system. However, older systems can have losses of about 30 or 40 percent. Sometimes they're even higher. As you've seen, such losses can be seriously reduced by a demand-driven distribution system, which will typically conserve 15,000 cubic meters for every 100,000 cubic meters you currently waste. In some cases, even greater. If we just look at the water saved and the savings on maintenance, a new demand-driven distribution system can pay for itself in less than a year. And you'll just keep saving and saving. On top of this, electricity consumption can be reduced by up to 25%. But remember, the real savings reside in stopping water loss. Which leads us to one final point. By reducing water loss in the systems you already have, you automatically raise your water supply capacity. This means that you can postpone new investments in infrastructure for several years, simply by making the most of what you already have. Demand-driven distribution. A hidden problem has a new solution.